The Lanka forces advancement into the Chola territories caused a great deal of embarrassment to the emperor and his authority was under fire. Lankapura's army was ruthless and destroyed every village in its path. People had even started praying and conducted many rituals to the gods for a divine intervention to stop Lankapura. Rajathiraja Chola stopped other campaigns and recalled all his troops and vassals. The civil war in Pandyan country, which has now spread to his own regions, claimed his entire attention. Along with his few detries, he raised a new Chola force and his vassal Peruman Nambi was given the command of the army. The emperor gave specific instructions to his general to kill Lankapura and other commanders who raided the Chola territories, at any cost. The army under Peruman Nambi departed from the Chola capital Gangaikonda Cholapuram. On hearing the enemy army approaching, Lankapura moved back to Pandya country and Peruman Nambi went straight after him. Both the forces met at a battlefield near Madurai in 1171. The battle was fierce and bloody. Finally, Peruman Nambi emerged victorious, and as instructed by the Chola emperor, he executed all commanders of the Lanka army including Lankapura. On hearing the defeat of Lankapura, Veera Pandya abdicated the throne and went into hiding. Peruman Nambi took the heads of Lankapura and other commanders of the Lanka army and hanged them from the gates of Madurai, as a sign to re-establish Chola authority and to revenge the invasion of Chola lands. Kulishekhara was installed as Pandyan king with Chola protection. There were still few Lanka forces scattered around the Pandyan country and the temple town of Rameshwaram were held by the Lanka forces. But the main force was defeated and their ally Veera Pandya was in hiding. Parakram Bahu was disappointed by the news and prepared for another invasion, but this time he planned to attack the Chola kingdom first. Sri Vallabha, nephew of Parakram Bahu and a rival claimant to the Sri Lanka throne, leaked this information to the Chola Emperor. Rajathiraja decided to take the battle to Parakram Bahu and sent a small but strong force under Palavaraya. Palavaraya's force crossed the sea discreetly and launched a surprise attack and destroyed Parakramabahu's preparation for war. The Chola navy continued to attack the Polo Narua kingdom's port towns and disrupted their war preparation. Commander Palavaraya's army camped in the captured areas and provided support to Sri Vallabha to claim the throne from Parakrambahu. The tides of the war were turned and Cholas regained the momentum while Parakrambahu was put in a defensive position. But the Lanka king was not the one to give up easily. He sent his messengers to Kulishekhara Pandya and reminded him the history between the Pandyan and Lankans. He also sent large bribes to the Pandyan king and convinced him to break free from Chola's control. Thus, a new alliance was formed against the Chola emperor. In 1174, Kulishekhara Pandya on the instructions from Parakrambahu, invaded the Chola lands. He was initially successful, but the stiff resistance from the local people and string of defeats against the Chola forces drove out the Pandyan king. The musical chair for the Madurai throne continued, as the Cholas again reinstated Veera Pandya to the throne, who they once fought against. By 1177, Veera Pandya was in the throne of Madurai but Kulishekhara kept rebelling. Rajathiraja Chola had recalled his forces from the Lanka Kingdom but his forces were still present in Pandyan Kingdom to fight the Lanka forces. Parakrambahu was able to stop a civil war within his kingdom and was recovering from the recent events. Even though there were no battles for some time, no official treaties were made and an uneasy peace remained between the three countries. By now, we would have thought Veera Pandya would stop switching sides. But no, the Game of Thrones in the Pandyan Kingdom still continued and within a year, in 1178, battle lines would be drawn again. In 1178, Kulithinga Chola III ascended the throne of Chola Empire after succeeding Rajathiraja Chola. Pandya affairs first claimed the attention of the newly crowned emperor and was keen on finishing it soon. 
The civil war in the Pandya kingdom had not yet settled when he came to the throne, and the Chola forces were still involved in active fighting in Pandyan kingdom. Kulishekhara who was rebelling against Veera Pandya had died but his son, Vikrama Pandya continued the rebellion. Parakram Bahu restarted his efforts against the Cholas and even convinced and made an agreement with Veera Pandya to help him against Cholas. Vikrama Pandya who was waiting for a chance to ascend the Pandyan throne leaked about the plan of Parakram Bahu to Kulithanga Chola and sought his help against Veera Pandya. Kulithanga Chola was furious and invaded the Pandya country. It was believed he personally led the invasion. Vikrama Pandya joined Kulithanga Chola's forces and marched to Madurai. The Lanka forces in the Pandyan country came to the aid of Veera Pandya and their combined forces marched to face the Chola forces. The battle was hard and long, the rivers turned red with the blood of the soldiers. Kulithanga emerged victorious and made several gains. He had completely destroyed the Veera Pandyan forces and the Pandyan king fled to Venad. The Lankans abandoned their positions. They withdrew entirely from the Pandyan country retaining only the area of Rameshwaram. Kulithanga Chola entered Madurai along with Vikrama Pandya and decreed celebrations across the country. Even though the country of Venad was under the Chola Empire, they had strong relations with Pandyas which caused them to provide refuge to Veera Pandya. By 1182, Kulithinga Chola went back to his capital after crowning Vikrama Pandya. Parakram Bahu withdrew his forces from mainland and stopped further attempts to invade Pandya or Chola country. Veera Pandya lost his ally Parakram Bahu but he gained another one in the form of the ruler of Venad, a descendant of Chera dynasty. In 1189, Veera Pandya marched to Madurai along with Venad army. Kulithanga Chola immediately marched to protect the Madurai throne and the battle took place at Nettu. Once again Kulithanga Chola won and Veera Pandya escaped back to Venad, but his queen and relatives were captured. The Chola emperor went to Madurai and demanded that Veera Pandya and king of Venad to surrender. The Chera king realized he couldn't oppose Chola army, convinced Veera Pandya to surrender. Both of them went to Madurai and paid obeisance to the emperor in the open Darbar in public display. It was said that Kulithinga Chola placed his feet on Veera Pandya's crown and spared his life and granted him freedom. Thus, the Pandyan civil war came to a complete end by 1189 and Vikrama Pandya continued to rule Madurai. Kulithinga Chola established his firm authority across the empire and was considered one of the powerful emperor of the Chola dynasty. Venard remained part of the Chola empire, and the kingdom of Polon Narua discontinued their efforts to gain influence in the mainland, but the town of Rameshwaram was under their control. Even though Kulithinga was a strong emperor, the empire's downfall would start during the final years of his reign. But that is a story for another video. So be sure to subscribe this channel to not miss the videos.